Now there seems to be a very spirited and serious effort to impeach the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya. And maybe I should share with you what a very seasoned veteran political analyst, analyst told me in private. He said this impeachment will go ahead. He sees the process going forward. However, it will go absolutely nowhere, according to him. He says it's a very good opportunity for MPs to make money. From where? From both sides of the political divide. Those supporting the impeachment and those opposing it. And meanwhile, attention will be taken away from where it should be. And that is on the crumbling economy of the country. Yeah, that's according to that analyst. Yeah, many years experience. Well, I don't agree with that analyst. <laughs> I don't. But I've quoted him because I believe his views are the views of the vast majority of Kenyans. For starters, the whole process of getting an impeachment against the deputy president going <laughs> is huge. There are way too many variables at play here. For instance, how will the Rift Valley react? Yeah. And then again, there's a possibility that there'll be a counter effort, yeah, a counter impeachment of the President of the Republic of Kenya in response. Being a bit familiar with the people who handle the President, <laughs> that is the last thing they want to see happening. Yeah, not the actual impeachment, but even the starting of such a process. And so in my view, the analysis should not start with whether the impeachment will go through or not yeah, of the deputy president. It should start by analyzing whether it will go ahead or not. Yeah, and what needs to be taken care of for it to go ahead. In my view, that is where such an analysis should start. And so, let's start from there. Yeah, and maybe try and do this as quickly as possible. In my view, this is exactly what a guy called David Morade was talking about when he said, in reference to the deputy president, we are coming and they know it. In my view, this is something that has been planned for a very long time. Indeed, this was planned even before the 2017 general elections. However, there is emerging evidence that those who are planning it greatly underestimated the deputy president's reach and influence, yeah, especially within parliament. And so, before this impeachment of the deputy president goes ahead, a few files have to be waived. For the sake of those who are new to this channel, let me explain what waiving of files is. <laughs> this is where the government compiles a file of your sins yeah, and things you did that broke the law. And then the victim is told, actually given two choices, either they play ball and the file goes back into the filing cabinet <laughs> somewhere at our intelligence services office or they refuse yeah, to play ball and the file lands on the desk of the public prosecutor. Now if we look around at what has been happening over the last few weeks and months in Kenya, there is clear evidence of suspected waving of files cases. Yeah? We have had politicians shifting camps very dramatically. We have, other, we have also had other politicians going very quiet all of a sudden. Yeah? And I'm talking about politicians in the deputy president's camp. There are even other politicians who have had complete Damascus moments. <laughs> they have completely changed yeah, and abandoned the deputy president's camp. The Orange Democratic Movement, whose leader is part and parcel of the handshake, has also taken very stern action yeah, with those within the party who have been warming up to the deputy president. When you put those facts together, I don't think it's a coincidence. We have also seen yeah, those close to the deputy president having scandals erupt yeah, and being exposed about them. The latest, of course, is the dams, <laughs> where 21 billion 
vanished into thin air. Yeah. And then the deputy president made a very serious mistake and came out and said, no, it was not 21 billion. People are telling lies. It was only 7 billion. Now I say that is a very serious mistake the deputy president made. Because in actual fact, what, what the deputy president was saying is that not a single cent was lost. Yeah. However, he was saying what has been spent on the project so far is only 7 billion. That is what he was saying. Yeah. However, I think the deputy president forgot <laughs> that he was in politics. And maybe he thought he was making remarks at a board meeting somewhere. Yeah, or at the annual general meeting <laughs> of a company somewhere yeah, in the business sector. Because that's the kind of environment where people listen carefully to what you have to say and go with what you said precisely. But in politics, <laughs> since the beginning of time, people wait for you to speak and then they pick things out of context and run with them. And those things become so big that everybody ends up forgetting what you really said. In fact, it becomes irrelevant what you really said or what you really meant. Now, the deputy president may have some very clever Wazungu advisors and very seasoned political advisors advising him. However, in this particular case, wherever he got the advice, <laughs> it was terrible advice. Because that move, ay, yeah, 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 yeah. And to make matters worse, nobody had even mentioned his name. Therefore, by making those remarks, he jumped in <laughs> and accused himself indirectly as the person who was being talked about. A much smarter move would have been just to remain mum, keep silent. And then when anybody dares mention his name in connection to the dams, <laughs> he comes out and asks them, boss, yeah, why are you spoiling my name? Do you have any evidence to mention my name in connection to the dams? That's what he should have done. But by jumping in, <laughs> he clearly incriminated himself. Yeah. It's like cops arresting some people with a bang. Or as we call it in Kenya, mangi. And they start saying we have evidence that you have been distributing 20 kilos of mangi in this area daily. And then a stranger walks out of the blue and says, no, it's not 20 kilos, it's 7 kilos. <laughs> What do you think the Kenyan cops will do? <laughs> Very simple. They'll tell this person of 7 kilos of bangi, where? Kujava. Tom Shippi. Ingiap. Translation for the sake of non Kenyans. You, come here. Get inside this cell and remove your belt before you do so. Yeah? It was just crazy. Up to now, I just can't explain it. And indeed, in the deputy president's case, that's exactly what would have happened to him. Only that is the deputy president of the Republic of Kenya. That's the only thing that stopped uh, cops from moving <laughs> towards him immediately. Although it is important for all of us to bear in mind that although the president of Re the Republic of Kenya is immune from any prosecution while he's in office, the deputy president does not enjoy the same immunity. That is the law. Bottom line, barring something extraordinary happening, which of course cannot be ruled out, then the impeachment of the Deputy President of the Republic of Kenya will go ahead. Now we can move on to analyze yeah, and try to predict how this impeachment will go. Now some of you out there may say that's very predictable. Yeah, The impeachment will go through. The Deputy President will be successfully impeached. It's very easy. There is overwhelming political support, yeah, even from ordinary people across the country, for the deputy president to be impeached successfully. I don't agree, because in our parliament, <laughs> things normally go differently. You would never trust yeah, popular public opinion to drive debate and decisions in parliament. Never ever, not in the Kenyan parliament. It is very common for legislators to stand up and talk very strongly yeah, in support of what the public wants. But when it comes to voting, <laughs> they vote against what they spoke. They vote for the other side, the opposing side. 
yeah, that they cut to shreds when they spoke. That's normal in the Kenyan parliament. So impeachment sailing through in parliament of the deputy president? Forget it. It won't sail through. Yeah. If actually it happens successfully, then it will just scrape through. That's my view. And it will be a very explosive debate. Yeah. And I'm predicting that the deputy president's camp will do a lot of, uh, <laughs> will do a lot of uh, revealing of secrets, dark secrets of the other side. Those are the usual tactics. You remember this legislator called Joshua Kutunye, yeah, the Cherengani MP. There was a time he was talking very loudly against the deputy president, yeah, and maze. And then during a Citizen TV live talk show, yeah, a DP Ruto uh, man, yeah, Kipchumba Makomen, dropped a bombshell. He said, he asked Kutuni if he's aware yeah, that he's being investigated, yeah, that uh, detectives in, and investigators from the United States are looking for him in relation to some drug-related charges. And he told Honorable Kutuni on live television, you will have nowhere to run. Those were his exact words. Now take careful note of what happened after that encounter. <laughs> Joshua Kutuni went very quiet. Yeah, he quieted down. Ali Tuliza Boli, Haraka Sana. That story of DP Ruto and Maze died. Up to today, I've not heard anything more. The DP Ruto camp are masters of that tactic and therefore expect a lot of it during the impeachment debate. In Kenya, we call that strategy. Strategy ile kuchafua chafua. <laughs> you deal with your opponent by releasing mud yeah, and stinking uh, canworms about them. So that attention is diverted away from you to them. Very interesting times ahead, folks. Very interesting. But unfortunately, also very dangerous. Until next time, this is Chris Kumekucha.